Guys, what's up? This is McAllister's podcast. I'm your host, always Coleman McAllister, coming through with another bonus episode. Um, kind of nice change of pace here. I thought I would switch it up. You know, we usually we talk a lot about social issues. Well, I mean, there's a lot of social issues kind of tagged, you know, tied into this, but you know, usually a lot of politics, or maybe you know, this last episode where I criticized religion. Um, so I thought it'd be fun to kind of take a bonus episode today away from all that into um you know something the internet is on the craze about right everybody's talking about it i'm not the first one um the kendrick lamar drake kind of not really j cole (laughs) um excuse me the the diss marathon that we've been getting which is crazy um for those who don't know these these three rappers really two rappers at this point um have been beefing for quite a long time since i mean early 2010s um you know just it just kind of long and gone not even long gone obviously not long gone um but really old drama controversy um at least the start of it was right um and i, I kind of already maybe i mentioned this in the last i don't i did a previous episode where i kind of touched on this um, the Kendrick Lamar, I think the original diss, but I mean, so much has happened since then. I kind of had to say something about it. Um, Kendrick Lamar has dropped three tracks in a row about, um, al- you know, different allegations against Drake um, with the, you know, the pedo stuff and, you know, uh, talking to minors, etc. cetera. Um, apart from just like a, a, you know, a huge sexual lifestyle with alleged you know baby mamas or whatever which i mean <laughs> honestly wouldn't surprise me from i mean really any of the rappers in the game right maybe even kendrick who knows um but you know it's 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 interesting right this whole thing that's going on it, it is i i kind of had st- like i'd seen stuff online except for like the last couple of days where it really really got heated i felt like um i'd heard the original track um, that Kendrick feature on that started this whole thing. I thought it was kind of just a right. Um, J. Cole's response was shit. Um, and then Drake had like an actually kind of decent comeback. Uh, with, like pushups is probably his only really, I mean, good. I don't even want to say good, decent track. And I mean, here's the thing about Drake. Like any track is not really like. It, like his rapping is never really that great. It's mostly just the sound behind it. Like he just has, he just you know happens to have just an amazing, uh, you know, producer. I don't even remember what that guy's name is, but um, I mean, at least back in the early 2010s, right? I'm sure now he has a wide variety of people he goes through. Um, but I will give him that credit. He does have the beats down. Um, <clears throat> but I mean, look, there's been allegations. I mean, besides the sexual allegations, right? There's been allegations of him having ghost riders and that thing i mean that i told i would again that's another thing right uh, with how fast this has been churned all these have been churned out i mean from both angles uh it really kind of shines a light on where the industry is at these days um how quick it all is like it for better or worse, right? I mean, I, I think uh, I think there's a lot of times in this whole thing where I mean, b- both artists really kind of lacked the quality on some of these tracks uh, for I think the rush of the internet because the internet's going full speed. You know, there was Drake just dropped. I mean, the last um, as of now, the last disc that we've seen, uh, Drake dropped the hard part six, which was garbage. Um, like here's the last thing: the two last Drake tracks that he's done, "Family Matters" and "Hard Part 6, I had to read the lyrics because I could, I'm like I'm not going to sit through 12, 13 minutes of Drake. Like it's just not I I don't consume that much of him. Look, nothing was the same was okay, but <laughs> beyond that, <laughs> it's just not really that good. All right. Um. Okay, so there's that angle, right? Um, and then let's talk of the other side. Uh, K dot Kenny. Um, something that, uh, has been really interesting. That's been really playing out. Um, you know, I think, I think he, the thing I really like about Kendrick that I've always appreciated about Kendrick Lamar is he is probably the only, if not one of the only artists 
main, like quote unquote mainstream artists in this day and age who actually talk about real issues and who are not afraid to call people out on their bullshit. I mean, he did an entire album um, to Pimp Butterfly where half the album is just him calling out like other black people, <laughs> you know, like his whole culture, you know what I mean? And like, he doesn't give a fuck. And the album was great because I mean, he, he called, like he called it out, but he also uplifted it so much in the other half that it was really just like, I mean, it's one of the greatest albums of all time. I mean, of any genre in my mind. Um, and the fact that they, K Dot is just, you know, with the track, I mean, I think the best track of it was Meet the Grams. I mean, really just did like a Kendrick esque six minute track, really laying everything out. I feel like that's the track that really, if you want to just encompass, like, find the encompassment of Kendrick's, you know, overall theme with this disc, just go listen to Meet the Grams. Um, not like that was a pretty good track. It was okay. Not quite the quality that I think Kendrick is capable of. And, you know, I kind of said in this last episode that I did a couple episodes ago about this. Um, I do think Kendrick's kind of in this stage where he is really dealing with a lot of, um, you know, recovery and all that from a sex addiction. Um, and I think, you know, when you're in recovery, you're focusing on that and maybe your artistry kind of falters a little bit. But I mean, I think that ultimately it's great that he's in recovery. And I think that's awesome. Um, and that's a big theme with this whole thing. Um, that I really appreciate being touched on. I mean, both the sexual aspect, the sexual addiction aspect, um, that, I mean, it, it's really shitty in a way that Drake uh, puts him down for that, especially clearly someone who <laughs> is himself immersed in that uh, fully, but, I mean, he just comes from that train of thought that there's nothing wrong with it, whatever. And then we have Kendrick, who, I mean, has really faced his and battled his personal demons and really you know come out and said how big of a problem this is how much this has really affected his life um i think the fact that they are that you know that drake is kind of just shitting on him for that i think i think it just really shows his lack of character i think that's been the most revealing thing about this whole thing is drake's lack of character and i i really um it's really kind of disappointing to see people Look, I mean, I, I'm a big believer in separate the art from the artist. I think that's a very valid, fair argument. But I think when you get to a point where you're kind of Drake standing to the point where it's just not, uh, you're you're almost just ignoring the allegations, ignoring the fact that he's a pedo. You're just like, okay, but I still love Drake. And uh, I think you should make a distinguishment, right? Like, I really like Harvey Weinstein's films. I think he did. I, <laughs> they made some great, like, you know, they produced some great films, him and his brother, right? But, like, I wouldn't go around saying I love Harvey Weinstein. Like, Harvey, I'm for Harvey Weinstein, you know what I mean? I feel like pe if people, it, with this, with these series of allegations, if people are going to go on a Drake stand and just, like, really row for Drake, I think they should at least acknowledge that. They should at least say, hey, you know what? I really fuck with this guy's music. I personally think he did a better job than Drake on the diss tracks. However, <laughs> he's probably a pedophile. And this isn't even like old news. This is from, you know, when I was in high school, I remember people were talking about that. And that was a decade ago. That's how old I am. <laughs> um, you know, but it's, it's, it's just wild how people are just kind of glossing over. I mean, there's one side of the aisle that's completely glossing over it. Um, and that just, I think, represents the ignorant class of America, people who are just, um, you know, they'll vote for, you know, <laughs> going to politics a little bit. Like, if you're going to, like, they'll be like, okay, I'm going to vote for pedophile A or pedophile B, uh, which one's going to be better, and we're just going to be okay with that, because that's, like, what are we going to do, right? I mean, clearly this is a different situation in politics, but, like, it just it just shows the, the culture that we're in, right, where people can just look the other way on that. Drake Bell, right? People can just... People can just clearly, you know, really easily shut that off and be like, okay, I'm just going to ignore, I'm just going to ignore these allegations. It's one thing to like disagree with them and be like, okay, you know, maybe I don't, I don't agree with the allegations. I think it should be looked into, et cetera. That's fine. But to just completely not acknowledge it, I think there's something kind of shitty in that. Um, I think Kendrick fans, if, um, if Kendrick came out as having an issue, you know, with minors like Drake did, I think that I would 
I would say that that side I would be more willing to admit that than the Drake side aisle. Just saying. I think there's a <laughs> I think there's a clear uh, um, difference in that. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, I I think Kendrick said some really uh, heartfelt things about like you know I I do think I do agree with his assertions and I really appreciate his assertions um, comparing him to Weinstein. Um, and I think Drake even laughed at that, which again really just showed how his character. And this is I I like I was getting really I was finding myself actually kind of getting pissed about this this morning. Is like here's yet another example of an individual who has no apparent uh, repercussions or anything for his actions against other women or or women or children or whatever. His behavior, his his, he just is able to do whatever he wants. It seems like. I mean, this is the man that put his dick on Twitter. <laughs> I mean, and everybody does that. Right? I'm not saying that that's like privilege or anything, but like, you know, it's is clearly obvious to anyone who's not a Drake stan how fucking much of this shit this guy's probably steeped in, probably stewed in. Um, and you know, who knows? Maybe Kendrick's information is false. Uh, on some of the allegations right? like with his kids and all that i'm willing to acknowledge that that's pro- that's possible um again i'm willing to i'm more you know i'm going to trust kendrick more than drake just based on their track records um but look i mean i i i think that there's something to be said for that that you just you just need to be able to acknowledge that and i really appreciate just and I kind of said this in a couple episodes ago too, but like the the fact that we're living in a day and age where the conversation of pedophilia and um, sexually assaulting minors and abuse on minors and all that, um, I'm really glad that's coming to the forefront. I'm really glad that it's in the public discourse and in the public conversation, especially in something like hip hop, which is uh, to say the least a very sexually aggressive genre um, in general. Not not throwing a shade on that. Obviously, I love hip hop, but um, I think for this this conversation to happen in that genre, I think it's really important because there's a line there, right? Like, it, you know, people are consenting and over 18, go for it. But if when that line, there's a line, right? There's a, <laughs> there's a clear line in society that we have determined, which is 18. And that's a good line. I think that's a great line. I think we should keep that. Like, I don't think people under the age of 18 should be having sex with adults or buying property or... <laughs> anything like that like you know doing drugs i like i don't think they should be doing any of that right um so it's good that we are having these conversations um but yeah i don't really know what me- what else there's to say on that i mean like i said uh being someone who myself is in recovery for porn sex addiction um that's always something i've really appreciated about kendrick over the last couple of years is his open conversation about that and I think the fact that he's really able to um, dissect that from Drake, again, regardless of whether information is true or not, um, let's say it's not true. Meet the Grams is a great, compelling story, right? Even if it's not accurate, I think it, it at least probably attributes to his character. Um, and I, I re- you know, the line I really loved, the, the thing I loved about Meet the Grams is how he ended that song. He really ended that song with, you know, like, I, you know, I can bash you all day, but really you're the one that has to live with yourself and live with your actions. I think that that's such a concrete point in all of these discussions, right? Is that there is some underlying truth that, I mean, unless you're like mentally ill and completely incapable of empathy, uh, you're at some point you're going to reap what you sow. You're going to reap the consequences of your malicious actions towards people. I do think that this is going to happen to Drake. I think it's happening right now. I really hope that this just fucking, I really hope it does something to his career. It probably won't, um, especially the fact now that he's just able to, like, you know, like he's just able to keep pumping out tracks and they still get, like, he's still profiting off it, right? Um, You know, it's sad, but we live in the day and age of all that. So what can you do? Uh, so yeah, uh, if, if you guys aren't familiar with any of this, any of this diss happening, I highly recommend at least go check out Meet the Grams. Uh, I, 
really just uh, that is like i haven't gotten chills from a diss track since eight mile so that was that i i've been just listening to that over and over again and just not even from the disc perspective but just like on its face value as a story uh really engaging so i loved it all right uh thanks for tuning in everybody a little bonus episode next time that we're up on the channel we're gonna be doing a game stream i promise so everybody check that out i apologize for the cats i don't have time to fuck with them this morning thank you all for tuning in peace have a good night